Now, my next guest has arguably done more for women court in the uh, justice system than anyone else in the UK. Harriet Wistrich recently represented Sally Challen, who was released from jail after nine years for killing her husband uh, when the court ruled she'd been a victim of coercive control. But statistics released in the last few days seem to suggest things may be going backwards. The number of convictions for rape has fallen uh, to a 10-year low. That's despite a record number of complaints. Last year, of the almost 58,000 reported rapes, there were just 1,925 convictions. That means uh, just 3.3% of reported rapes end in a conviction. At the same time, it's been revealed that the number of people killed by their partner uh, has hit a five-year high, with 173 people killed in England and Wales last year, 32 more than the previous year. And Harriet is uh, with us now. And um, Harriet, just to start with those figures, I mean, the rape conviction numbers going down, that's quite alarming, isn't it? It is very alarming, yes. Um, I mean, they're going down at a time where women are coming forward more to report rape, particularly following the Me Too movement. Um, so there is an increase in reports, but there is a very dramatic decline in the number of prosecutions. We're actually bringing a, a legal challenge, uh, which we'll be launching this week, against the uh, Director of Public Prosecutions, because we believe that this has come about as a result of a change in the approach of the CPS towards Crown charging... Prosecution yeah, service, the Crown yeah. Prosecution Service towards um, charging decisions. Uh, we think that they are um, taking, becoming more cautious uh, in, an, in, a, in an attempt to increase their conviction rate. And we've gathered a whole range of evidence to support um, our, um, uh, approach, our um, challenge yeah. because um, the, the, see, at the moment the, the Crown Prosecution Service are denying what we say, but we, we have quite a lot of evidence to, to show that, that actually it's come right from a cultural change at the top. So, so, the, so the CPS, you're saying, is in some ways raising the bar when it comes to going for a prosecution. Is, yes. that, is that your case? Yes, and, 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 and essentially um, there is a, um, an approach to prosecuting rape. As we know, rape is um, kind of full of myths and stereotypes uh, because of the way our culture understands sexual relationships and, and for sex. And so um, a few years ago, um, the Crown Prosecution Service introduced something called the merits-based approach um, to prosecuting rape. So the idea was to try and have an approach to making decisions when you look at the evidence and you, you look at it objectively on the facts and try and free yourself from second-guessing what a jury might decide. Because there are all sorts of um, jury-type myths, you know, that everyday people may think, well, the woman didn't report it straight away, she didn't mm. struggle, um, she was dressed provocatively, she was drinking too much, all sorts of presumptions made about a woman's behaviour um, that, that, that may make juries less inclined to convict uh, even though objectively on the evidence... But these seem very old-fashioned presumptions. Well, they are, mm. they are, um, but they still seem to be uh, pervade um, our, our wider public uh, views around uh, rape and sexual offences. So your, case, your, your issue is not with the police, who, who it, it's with the Crown Prosecution Service? Yes, well, we say it started with the Crown Prosecution Service. The result of this slight cultural shift at the top, and it's, it's minor, but it kind of has a butterfly effect as it, as it goes across uh, others involved in prosecution and investigation, is that um, the police have been receiving, getting this negative approach uh, from the CPS, so they're referring less cases. All the CPS are sending stuff back that the, the police mm. refer and saying you've got to do X, Y and Z. And, and, and their response is, is either, uh, well, they're, they're just not going to prosecute in these cases, or um, that, that um, you know, if they're, if they're not that bothered, they just think, well, we can drop this one because it's a giving us a load of extra work. We've been reporting recently on a number of cases that were dropped or appear to have been dropped because WhatsApp messages or text yes. messages have come to light mm -hmm. reflecting an amicable relationship at the time. Yeah. Well, um, this is a... Uh, the, the Crown Prosecution Service will say, or one of the, one of the things they say, 
is that um, since uh, we now use, um, we have access to data, we need to download all, all the, the data available um, to pass that on to, to um, the defendant. Uh, and, and that's a sort of separate issue uh, in a sense, but what it does mean is it increases the volume of work that the police have to do. In terms of, you know, that, that very point, well, there was evidence they were in an amicable relationship, that in itself is, is, a, is a potential myth because, because you happen to have an amicable relationship it doesn't mean that you can't then be raped and that the, the man turns sure. against you. And that's one of the things that does come up quite a lot. So, so to your point, you are going to what, take a le make a legal case against the Crown Prosecution Service? Is yes, that what you're that's intending right. to do? Yeah, we're bringing... With, uh, with what? To achieve what? Uh, well, to, to reverse uh, the, their... You know, to, to reverse their change in approach and to make them reintroduce the merits-based approach. And on the issue of... Um, domestic violence and the killings. Yes. Um, the, can you see a reason why those numbers should be going up in such a way? Um, I, I, th I think one of the reasons, I mean, this is another piece of work we've done at the Centre for Women's Justice, is, is um, perhaps partly down to under-resourcing of police and, under, and, and the lack of training or understanding about uh, the sort of warning signals for... Um, fatal homicide. And these are even overwhelmingly women victims? Yes, absolutely. And men perpetrators? Yes. Not, not exclusively, clearly? Not exclusively, no, not at all. But, but certainly um, the majority of domestic homicides are, are women victims uh, by male partners. And, and um, the, the, there are um, all sorts of um, protective measures that police can take to intervene where there are domestic violence incidents. But are our work, we work very much with frontline women's organisations across the country who do work around domestic violence uh, as well as rape. And, and they report to us that, that the police are not using many of the powers that they're given or they're not arresting on breach of non molestation order. And of course, even, even what seems like a small failure could be the failure that makes the difference right, um, yeah. in, a, in a fatal homicide. Um, you famously acted for the perpetrator of yes. domestic violence, um, Sally Challen. How significant was your victory? And my other question, I think, is how many Sally Challens are there still in prison who you think should be, you know, should be out? Yeah. Well, first of all, although obviously killing is, is a, an extremely violent act... It was a very uh, violent act. Very, and it was a, it was a very violent killing. Um, it was the only uh, violence that ever, ever occurred from her in the relationship. She, she was, what well, the whole basis of that appeal was a, a, around evidence that emerged that she had been a victim of systematic coercive controlling behaviour. So although the final act was, was hers, the, the, the lead up to the act and the, over a 40 year relationship was one in which she was the victim of the coercive and controlling relationship. And, and in fact, this is the, the, the other side of the coin. Often those cases where, where women kill uh, men in relationships, um, they, they are responding to uh, a kind of uh, a, a, a relationship where they've been the victim throughout and they've taken, they, they've been driven in a sense to, mm. this, to this final awful act, if you like, because, because of what they've been subjected to. Um, there are, um, we, we are actually uh, doing some research at the moment about how many, how many women um, are in similar positions to that and, and, and we, we're, we're aware of quite a number of cases. In fact, there are a number of others in the pipeline which we're, we're trying to... We're looking at ways of appealing convictions. Um, but, but, to but, get them reduced from murder to manslaughter. Yeah, most, most, most of the cases um, would be more properly be manslaughter rather than murder. Right. So it's not, not that the women are saying they didn't do it, they accept they did it. Sometimes self-defence is, is the appropriate defence. The difficulty with self-defence such as in the Sally Challen case, you have to show that there's, there's a response to immediate threat. And, and so while some of those cases do fit that, that description, others, others do not. So, so really what you're looking at, partial defences to murder, which mitigate the gravity of the offence, right. if you like. Do, do you think... I've just got a minute or so left. Do you think that the, gov the government is taking domestic abuse seriously enough? Well, uh, the, the um, government did introduce a domestic abuse bill 
Um, we don't now. Don't know what's going well, to happen. Well, Boris Johnson says it, it will. He, he does, but obviously um, everything is kind of being put on the back burner at the moment, and there may be a general election, and who knows what follows. The domestic abuse bill is um, is is a step forward. It's um, and and um, it um, it has got shortcomings um, to it, so it doesn't uh, right. doesn't deal with everything. But the real problem <clears throat> is that you can have as many different policies and measures and laws. But unless they're actually enforced by by the police and by uh, the other criminal justice agencies, they're they're not very much use. And and what what has to go hand in hand with the the legislation is the funding and the support uh, to ensure that that the criminal justice agencies sure. can enact those laws. And and we find that they're not doing so a lot of the time. And and very briefly, um, topical subject: uh, Theresa May giving a knighthood to Jeffrey Boycott. What what do you make of that? <laughs> well, it's pretty awful, really, given given the the history of 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 what what was described by the it was the French courts, I think, wasn't yeah, well, it? Yeah, she still denies. But he does, yeah. But the, the, it seems like fairly compelling evidence, from what I know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Harriet Wistrich, appreciate your time. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.